Hello and welcome to our traditional service. My name is Andrew Cooney and it's my joy to welcome you to Bethany's service today. As we celebrate Memorial Weekend, we're going to be looking at a passage of scripture in Romans that talks about peace and joy and how God gives that to us and what he asks of us in return. We want to take a moment at the beginning of our service to remember and to celebrate all the veterans, both those who are currently serving and those who have served in the past. This is especially important this weekend as we remember those who have served our country and lost our, their lives to defend our freedom and to make sure that we had a hopeful future. So I'd like to invite you to take a moment to pray with me for all of our veterans and especially for those who gave their lives that this country might be the strong and beautiful place that it is. Let's pray. Father, we take a moment to thank you for all the veterans, for those who are serving and for those who have uh, served in the past. We honor you and bless you for those who had the courage and the strength to stand up in times of war. We thank you for those who defended our freedoms, who gave us liberty, and who enabled us to live with a kind of joy and prosperity that we have even now. We ask that you would bless the families of those that lost loved ones, and that you would give them the kind of peace that endures. We thank you for those who are willing to be on the front lines to defend us and to give us the gift of a bright future. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship together.
Hi friends, I'm so excited to see you. I've been waiting for you to get here because this week I got in the mail a package from my special friend Julie and she always sends the most fun things and I thought you might like to see what's inside. But everything here was inside the package. Um, but do you wanna dive in and see what it's about? All right, let's just start by reading the note. Dear Kathy, I know how much you love my craft projects. I do. So here is a surprise craft for you. The surprise is this. You won't know what it is until you finish it. But trust me, you're going to love it. You'll have it just in time for summer. So trust in my directions and have some fun. Hmm. Well, this is all the stuff that was in the bag. I've got some tape and two popsicle sticks and brand new markers and a paper plate and glue and scissors. I have no idea what we're going to be making. Do you have any guesses? Well, I tell you what, she says trust in her directions. So let's get started. Cut the paper plate in half. friends, here it is. Do you know what it is? I don't think I do. The last thing she writes is stay cool all summer. Stay cool, stay cool all summer. I know what it is now. It's a fan. Oh my goodness. My friend Julie is just so clever. I never would have guessed that that's what we were making when we first started this. Would you? But my friend Julie did, and she knew how much I'd love doing it, and she knew how much fun it would be after it was finished. I could use it all summer long. That's why she asked me to trust her, because she knew the end of the story. Do you know who else knows the end of the story? God knows the end of the story. God knows the beginning, the middle, and the end of all of our stories. God knows the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story of the entire universe. Isn't that amazing? That's why when things get tough or frustrating because we don't know what's going to happen, we can keep going because we can trust these two things. The first thing is that God loves us no matter what. God loves us. And number two, God is with us and God knows the end of the story. So if we know that God always loves us and that God is with us and that God knows the end of the story, then we can keep going through those really tough times. We can have determination. Now determination has been our life app this month. And in today's Bible story, you'll see how holding on to those two things, knowing how much God loves us and knowing that God is with us and knows the end of the story helped one man get through such a rough journey. So check it out. The links are in a, the parent news that I sent to your parents on Friday, or I'm getting ready to pop them in the YouTube or Facebook um, and Facebook chats, and they're on our website. So keep going. Keep up the determination. Know how much God loves you. And I love you too. Have a great week. Good morning, my name is Brenda Lewis and I am the pastor for Missions and Congregational Care. It is my joy to share with you the continuous efforts and blessings of Bethany to the immediate community. In addition to our three day food drive, where we were able to provide four carts of food to the Route One Day Shelter, Bethany, through your generous giving to our pastor's discretionary fund, provided meals for 50 individuals at Grassroots Homeless Shelter. We partnered with Famous Dave's and with Asian Bistro. 
we provided through that collaboration two nutritious hot dinners. The joy in reaching out to our partners through the local restaurants in the community is that Asian Bistro and made a personal donation of incurring 50% of the cost for that meal. This, among other activities, such as individuals donating to the Humane Society, as well as other members of Bethany coming together, pooling resources to provide additional hot meals to those who still are sheltered in the facility at grassroots. Others continue to make face masks a much needed item as we begin our process of discerning our reopening, as well as those who continue to do grocery shopping and provide other items. As Sandy shared on last Sunday, this is how we continue to be a beacon of light. Thank you and may God bless you. Thank you God for all you have given us, especially this weekend. We are thankful for all of those men and women in our armed service who have given their lives to keep our country free. We honor their sacrifice. <clears throat> we are also thankful for all the men and women who are serving now in the fight against the virus that we can be saved and people's health, health can be restored. We are most thankful for your son, Jesus, who healed the sick, but who also sacrificed his life in love service um, to you so that we all would be free to love you with our whole heart. Jesus is our hope and we are grateful, God. Amen. Hello friends, today we're going to be talking about joy and peace in a passage in Romans chapter 15 that we started looking at last week. Today I'm going to ask you if you'd read along with me in that verse so we get a context for what we're going to be talking about today and then we'll go from there. Would you read with me? The words will appear on your screen. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely, isn't that a great word, completely, with joy and peace, because you trust in Him. <clears throat> Today we're going to understand a little bit better what Paul means in that sentence, and how that fits in your life, and then what he's asking of us in that process. I want to begin by thinking about joy and peace. For many of us, joy seems a lot like happiness. 
Maybe it's a spiritual form of happiness to some people. But I think joy is maybe even a step above happiness. In my mind, it's this beautiful sense of overwhelming wonder that happens as we understand the world. And an enjoyment of the things around me. And almost a, a river flooding out of my soul of goodness. Peace is a lot like calmness. In the middle of all circumstances, just to be able to be calm. So when we think about joy and peace, for many of us, we think in terms of God as almost being antidotes, almost like a vaccine against pain and problems. <clears throat> now many of us know that's not true, but that's kind of how we think about it. If we had joy and peace all the time, this is what it would look like. It would mean that... Um, we might not feel pain or trouble or problems because we have joy and peace. And what I want to suggest to you is that maybe in hard times, joy and peace feels like something different, looks like something different than the picture that we just painted. <clears throat> A few months ago, my daughter Abby, and I have permission to tell this story, was doing a lab report for school. She was... Well, she'd worked five hours on this lab report. And she was using a program that auto-saves. Now, for those of you who are not technologically uh, up on what it means to auto-save, it's as simple as it sounds. It's a program that as you use it, it automatically saves so that you don't lose anything. So she worked these five hours. She got her lab report almost done. And as she came to the conclusion of it, uh, the program crashed. Well, no big deal, it auto saves, right? So she pulled up the program and began searching for the file and couldn't find it anywhere, which is when she came to her mother and I in the living room to say, can you help me find this file? In a slight panic. Well, we said, well, it auto saves. So yes, of course, we'll find it. Her mother and I are reasonably good with computers. We're not IT experts, but we're reasonably good and felt confident that we could do that. So after 20 minutes, a half an hour of searching between my wife and I, we came to the conclusion that it just wasn't there. No one knew why or how that could happen or, or where it could have possibly gone, but it, it wasn't anywhere. At which point in time, we said to Abby, who kind of knew that this was about to be the news, I'm sorry, sweetheart, but it's just not there. Now, Abby's a really stable teenager, and <clears throat> she takes things pretty proportional to how they are. But it was the evening and the lab report was the next day and she spent five hours and she'd done in the math in her head as to how long it would take to recreate, plus all the energy that was invested in doing that and putting everything together. And the weight of it just hit her and she just crumpled in the chair weeping. As a dad, it was devastating. She seemed so broken. I mean, it just came from the bottom of her. And so I sat there praying. I'd already been asking God to help us find the file. But I began praying, please do something, God. Miraculously make it appear. Help us to find it in a place we didn't look. Do something. Help fix my baby girl. Or maybe not fix her, but fix the problem. But if you could help her, she's, she's suffering. Nothing. We still didn't find the file. After about another 20 minutes, Abby pulled herself back together, took a deep breath, sat down with her computer, and in an hour produced a new lab report that incidentally she got an A on. When she was done her lab report the second time, she sat down at the kitchen table, and there was not only relief on her face, but there was a renewed sense of peace and joy. It had returned. And I thought to myself, there it is. <clears throat> but what I realized in some respects was that it had never left. Under duress like that, joy is really strength. And peace is the steadiness to continue on. It may not feel like peace. Sometimes it does, but oftentimes it doesn't. 
They may not feel like joy. Sometimes it does, but other times it doesn't. It has the ability to take on a different characteristic to it. A strength and a steadiness in the middle of those times. We would oftentimes like God to fill us almost in a magical way with a joy that just doesn't ever stop and a peace that doesn't ever end in the kind of way we think about joy and peace. But human experience tells us and figures in Scripture show us that that's not what God does. It doesn't feel that way. But His Word says that He gives it to us. Now there's another mystery here too and that has to do with humanity and how God made us and what that means for us. And how we understand God's word when it says that he fills us with joy and peace. I'm going to grab some stuff here. Just off screen. I don't get to do children's sermons, so I have to do them for adults. I'm a little jealous of Kathy Vidic, to be honest with you. I love children's sermons. So when we think about the image of God filling us with joy and peace, we think about us, we think about joy and peace, And we think about being filled. Right? And that's it, right? Filled. But if we look at another letter that Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, here's what he says. He says, We have this light, which is Jesus. We have this light shining in our hearts. But we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. Here's what Paul is saying in that passage. We are like fragile clay jars that God inhabits, moves into, if we let him. Now, This is not a clay jar, obviously. It's plastic, right? But what I mean by it is that it's perfectly shaped. It's whole. It has no cracks, no holes, no damage to it at all. Just to be safe, I'm going to pour some of this back in here. On the other hand, our lives are not like that, are they? Clay jars in Jesus' day, well, they would get cracked. They would ship. They would not always be whole. How many of you, just thinking about it for a second, know that your lives are not completely whole? You have cracks. You have leaks. You have places of pain in your life. And in fact, that if God were today to fill you with joy and peace, that it may look more like this than this. See, what God is trying to tell us is that He is the source of our joy and peace and that He's willing to fill us. But because we're more like this than this, it isn't a one-time filling. It's not like we feel like this all the time. Not only does joy and peace feel different under different circumstances, but it can leak out of us. Have you ever felt that before? Have you ever had periods of time where it felt like all the joy had leaked out? All the peace had leaked out? And in moments like that, we need to be remembered that it's God who's willing to fill us. That God is the one who's willing to come and bring that to us. That we don't have to generate it. We don't have to pretend. We don't have to make it up on our own. But that God will bring it to us. And Paul says in our original passage that he fills us with joy and peace because we trust him. Because we trust him. In other words, we will remember that hope is from God. And that God is the source of joy and peace. When we trust Him in that, He can fill us. Now this is so important for a couple reasons. 
First of all, because sometimes our cup is already full. It's full of anxiety. It's full of pain. It's full of other things. And we have to trust that if we empty that, God will fill it with joy and peace. Second of all, we just have to know that we're earthen jars. I wish I had a good cup that looked like that to show you the contrast. I just had to cut holes in this one to, to symbolize how I feel sometimes. And probably how you feel. But the notion that joy can leak out of me is just a part of my everyday life. You read a website, you get bad news, you find something hard, you face a different challenge, and you can feel it leaving your body. And you need to go back and ask for more. I remember a few months ago, I was in a situation as the pastor to, one of the pastors here, to, to make a call that was hard, to have a hard conversation. You know, all of us on staff have to do that from time to time for different reasons. It's not something anybody likes to do. I'm sure you've had to do that. As a parent, as somebody in your job, to a friend, hard conversations. The topic can be hard. Their feelings about it and the way they relate to the topic can be hard. Expressing your own feelings can be hard. A hard conversation. So I needed to call somebody who was doing business with the church. And I needed to change something about the way that we did business. Or at least ask that it be changed. Or to work through some issues. And so I wasn't sure how to have it. It was on my to-do list. And I knew it had to be done. But it, I, I, you know, are you ever like that? Like those kinds of things, it's easy to want to just avoid. And, and, I, and I hadn't pushed it off for long. It was maybe a day. And I said, okay, I need to just make a call. And before I did, I stopped and I prayed. And I said, God, I... I in this moment, I have no joy. I don't like doing this. And I have no peace. Would you please help me? Give me wisdom. Give me strength. I'm coming to you as the source. Help me. And then I dialed the phone. The other person answered, and they said, Hey, how you doing? How can I help you? And I, and I said, Well, uh, I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you? And they said, Good. And I said, Well, I need to have a hard conversation. And I, and I did that because sometimes just saying that out loud helps me and them. And, and the person, what they said, caught me off guard. I mean, really caught me off guard. They said, I love hard conversations. I said, really? And they said, yeah. I said, why? And they said, well, I found that... Um, some of the most challenging conversations in life are about some of the most important issues in life. And that they take a relationship to a different place when you can have those conversations. So, let's have it. And I said, okay. And, and, I, and, I, and I described the topic, and I described, I, I, I questioned um, their feelings about uh, what we wanted to do, and, and, and we worked through it. And by the time I was done and hung up the phone, I felt a renewed sense of joy and peace. But what I realized was that it had been there in a form all along. Now, it leaks out of me all the time. But in this case, it was a strength and a steadiness that carried me through that moment. Because I'd asked my father to help me, and I trusted that he would do that. And because I trusted him, he brought me what I needed. He carried me through. And I'm wondering how many times you and I, first of all, don't realize that we're leaking. How many things in our life cause us to lose peace and joy? And how many times do we have to empty other stuff out to receive it? It also challenged me because we're called upon to trust God. 
And that's an easy thing to say that we do, but to actually do it in hard moments is a completely different thing. If you've ever lost something, like Abby lost her paper, if you've ever lost your something as simple as your car keys, maybe it was an important document, maybe it was something you needed for your job, you know how it can rock your peace and joy. And to trust God in the middle of it, to turn to him and to ask him to be with you, well, that's his privilege as a father. He loves being there. I love the fact that Abby came to us. I love her trust that we would help her. Now, here's the beautiful part of this. I cycled back a couple of months later, and Abby had a conversation with us about that lab report. She remembered it happening. I don't remember the context. And she said how she remembered how much, how hard it was and what it was like to have to turn around in that moment with everything inside of her and to get it done again and how it had given her a greater sense of strength and confidence and a sense that God would help her with anything. And I thought to myself, God, I begged you to fix it and what you gave my kid was something even bigger than a solution. You've made her a stronger woman. You've made her more confident. You've built into her a deeper sense of character and a willingness and a desire to trust in you. And I want to let you know, God, how much I appreciate that. And I wonder sometimes if we realize how much God wants to bless us, what he wants to give us, and how amazing his gifts are. And that if we will trust him, he is willing to completely fill us with joy and peace. And I'm going to guess there are times when you don't feel it, and I'm going to guess that there are times when it leaks out of you, and you've got to come back for a refill. But if you will come to your Father, he will give you good gifts. He will bless you. He will walk with you. And in the process, shape you into an amazing person. Even more beautiful than you are now. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for all that you do. Thank you that you want to fill us with joy. Fill us completely with joy and peace. We pray that as we learn to trust you, and as we learn that we have to empty our cup of other things for you to fill us, and as we learn that we leak, that we will see you as the source of joy and peace. Even when they feel like strength and steadiness, and that we will discover that you are always willing to fill us, again and again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.